Welcome to Fandemonium, where if you love something, it's Drew Demonium Day, and we are going to talk all about Deadpool. Spoiler free review of Deadpool coming up, coming at you right now. But first, Drew. Uh, is it time for a title sequence? Sure. <laughs> Deadpool is set to be released next week, so we're going to do a spoiler-free review here for you. Next week, we'll come back and talk about full spoilers. We're excited to get in on that, but first, Drew, what'd you think? Surprised by it. Um, surprised it exists, frankly. Um, <laughs> considering that we have seen a long era of Fox being, uh, I would say, overly protective of what they would or wouldn't allow to happen inside the X-Men universe, uh, it is surprising that not only have they made the R-rated movie that they've made, but they, they have made one that connects as completely as it does to the real Fox movie universe. Yeah, it's interesting because this is a relatively smaller budget for them. It's yes. still a big budget. It's, it's a small million. movie yeah, in many ways. It, that's what's fascinating about Deadpool is like you you think that how many people were involved and had their hands on and were invested in and worried about Fantastic Four. And it feels like with Deadpool, they're like, ah, f <laughs> well, like, it's do it's whatever you want. I I would say it is it is the ultimate effort moment of kind of modern superhero cinema, and it breaks rules left and right in terms of how it's built, in terms mm -hmm. of what it does, in terms of what its attitude the is. Stakes. It's very much in terms of what the stakes are. <laughs> um, it's very much a Looney Tunes cartoon in that it does not care about whether or not something makes sense. No. It's willing to break reality just right down the middle and then just keep moving as if that's completely fine. Yeah, and I think the thing that I think the thing that really works the best about it and that fans will be pleased with, I'll be curious to see what larger audiences say about the movie, but this definitely is Deadpool. And I think especially after Wolverine Origins, you know, Ryan Reynolds really wanted to redeem that character. And this is dead this is the Deadpool, like the unabashed sociopathic, psychopathic, funny, charming, lovable, Spider Man looking badass Deadpool. Well, and it, it kind of points up something about Ryan Reynolds that I've, I've held as a theory for a while, which is sincerity is not really his wheelhouse. No. And one of the <laughs> one of the great Comic-Con moments I've ever seen was when he came out for Green Lantern and the little boy in the audience, and at that point, nobody had heard the oath. Yeah. And the little boy in the audience asked him to do the oath and Ryan did it for him. And it was very sweet and it was very sincere and he got a lot of play. But the thing in movies about Ryan is Ryan is built to be a wise ass. Mm -hmm. And this movie is wise ass from the moment it begins. Literally, the opening credits are wise ass. Yes. The way the movie ends is wise. The movie itself is a wise ass. When you try to let Ryan Reynolds be too sincere on camera, he's just... His face is shaped wrong. His eyes are too close it together for you, him to be sincere. It it's makes just you feel wrong. Uncomfortable. It does. It's not. He doesn't <laughs> sell sincerity. No. But he sells wise ass like nobody else. And that's what this character is. And the other thing is obviously Deadpool in the comics is a very self referential character. Mm -hmm. And he makes fun of the fact that he's in a comic book and he knows he's in a comic book. And so he makes fun of that structure. I'm almost glad Ryan Reynolds does. has had failures. I'm yeah, almost glad Wolverine Origins is terrible it. because he gives him fodder for this movie. <laughs> I'm glad Green Lantern's a terrible movie because he gets to make 50 jokes about it now. Yeah. And to some degree, his failures inform why this is funny because he there's nothing, nothing matters at this point. If he fails again, it's just another failure. Yeah. If he succeeds, it's wild, wild victory out of the jaws of defeat. I almost and I think that's kind of the Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just but I think that's the fun of it, is it feels like he went, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna give it 100 percent this attitude and if this isn't what they want there's nothing else i can do yeah he this is deadpool yeah. yeah he did and what's funny is i almost do think he has a lot riding on it for those for those reasons though because he has had this like he has tried so hard to do a comic book movie he has um and it's just not worked but i it's funny because i we're not telling you anything that's not in the trailers but you've probably seen in the trailers that colossus and negasonic teenage warhead to x-men are in this movie and it's like a and they joke. are x-men they are there is no doubt they are X-Men. Yeah. Yes. There is no question. They don't tap dance around it. They don't hide from it. They don't try to kind of like have it both ways. No, they are clearly 
X-Men in this movie. And one funny thing about it is that we were talking about this earlier. Poor Colossus is so tonally dissonant with this movie, but it's part of the joke. It's like he does not belong in the Deadpool world and he's trying so hard to do the right thing and be a good X-Men. Um, and it just doesn't work. But the reverse, I wonder if it's true. Does Deadpool fit into a proper X-Men movie, which has been... You know, really, this has been a family franchise in, in, in most ways. Well, this is R. This is unrelentingly R. And I think to ever take Deadpool out of this environment and go yeah. put him back into the PG-13, you risk once again sewing his mouth closed, yeah. metaphorically speaking. I think that he needs to be in this world. And if the X-Men want to cross over and play in this world, it becomes very, very funny. Yes. I think him in their world becomes... Again, it's like handcuffed. Just awkward. He's just yeah, he doesn't yeah. fit. So I'm I'm fine with the idea that they would love to recruit him. They would love to get him in, and it'll never happen. He's never gonna do let it. it. Let it be the running joke that they'll never get him back over to the X Men side of things. Yeah, he's they'll the just one keep, that got away. Yeah, they'll just keep coming <laughs> over to his when they want to play a little rougher. I would love to. This is a little bit off topic and has nothing to do with the movie at all. This does not even get hinted at. But you know, Deadpool and Spider Man um, have like kind of a fun rapport in the comics that will never see that happen. But there was the whole time there was a part of me that was wondering, like, what did he do? What would he do with Spider-Man in this world? This is what I hope um, if, and it's the reason that I, I feel like they have one more shot at getting Spider-Man right and doing something different with Spider-Man. What I hope they take from Deadpool, and this is for anybody making any comic book films moving forward, is it's kind of the same thing about the CW when the CW shows work. It's one of the things that is true of superhero movies in general. Let the character be the character. Yeah. If you're going to make the movie, make the movie. And the lesson has got to be at this point, fail or succeed. If you're going to make it, make it. Don't run from it. Don't be embarrassed by it. Don't soft pedal it. Don't halfway do it. Don't try to hedge your bets. Just make the movie. Right. If you bought it and you think there's a, an audience for it, chances are the details you cut are the things somebody loves. So let it be what it is. Let Spider-Man be funny next time he's Spider-Man. Yeah. Let him be all the way funny. That's one of his defense mechanisms. It's how he pisses villains off because well, he makes fun of them. Yeah, and Deadpool is is in some ways the R-rated Spider-Man. Yeah. He's quippy, but in a much bluer way than Spidey is, um, which could make them, which makes them fun together in the comics. Probably never see it in the movies, but I feel like I wanna and I, and I this is wildly irresponsible, and I still feel like I want to do it. I want to encourage thirteen-year-olds to sneak into this movie. Okay. For for the it's one of could those we movies actually that we get in trouble for this. No, <laughs> no, because like listen to your parents. Don't do it. <laughs> do it. Um, it, it's one of the, it's one of those films. If I'd seen it at thirteen, it would have blown my mind. Yes. I would have been in love. I would have been so happy. I would have felt like, oh my god. I, first of all, I shouldn't have seen that, and I know I shouldn't have seen that. And I should never tell anybody I saw it because I think I just committed a crime. It's exactly aimed at them. Yes. it's aimed at this you know, that age group who probably isn't quite old enough to see it, but they will see it anyway, and they will adore it on a chemical level. Well, that brings us to who this audience is for. I'm very curious to see how it does in theaters. It's tracking very well. I think it's aimed directly at the heart of the fans. The fans will be very happy with it. I have no idea what other... I, we had a friend go with me who didn't know anything about this world and was like, I didn't understand this joke and that joke. So I'm curious to see if that translates. But if you're a fan of Deadpool and if you've been looking forward to this movie, it's absolutely going to deliver... You said something that I think is really true. If you don't like it within the first ten minutes, get up and leave. It's not gonna. <laughs> it's not like. It's not like it takes a left turn and suddenly it's a different movie. Pretty much those first ten minutes, and I would also argue the first ten minutes are maybe the most extreme stuff in the film. Um, if you're not on board. You're not going to be on board. Yeah, I agree 100%. Even with that title sequence, it tells you what the movie is. So you guys can look forward to see, seeing Deadpool next week. And the, and the romance montage. The ro I love that romance <laughs> montage. I will say this. That couple, so Deadpool. Oh, it's going to, there's there's a big conversation to be had after we're this. We're going to talk about that yeah. couple, but that's maybe my favorite couple I've seen on screen in a while, friend. Something else. It's something else. <laughs> And I say that this is a romance. This is maybe one of the best romances I've seen this year in some ways, which says a lot of things about romance in the movies, but it's a great couple. Okay, you guys check it out. Um, let us know when you think, when you see it next week, and we will be talking spoilers then. Until then, thanks for tuning into Fandomonium. I'm Roth Cornett on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Drew at HitFix on Twitter. 
man. We will be here just mucking it up, chucking it up, <laughs> it up. I hope you're believing me. Love you. Bye.